Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. Um, <clears throat> just finishing up a couple cuts on a uh, <clears throat> Model 18 transfer case. Uh, rear uh, rear yoke. Uh, this is where your dry shafts connects. And uh, just making a cut here and I'll show you what that's for in just a little bit. Uh, we got to remove some material to get a bolt in there. Okay, we're over here on the teardown bench again, and we've got another T90 stacked up on our transmission rack. This is an early side shifter. I don't think you can see in there. And we've just got the guts out of it right now to see what we need. We'll take apart the shifter and replace those seals. And um, we'll get that rebuilt. <clears throat> Transfer case had some trouble. A few of the needle bearings, uh, the cage bearing got away from uh, the cage there, so that was probably making a racket. And the bearings are all chewed up. Um, <clears throat> but what I'm doing today, I get a lot of requests, and I actually didn't think of it in time when I was pulling this transfer case apart. I get a lot of requests for how to get this rear drum and flange off here. I guess I didn't show that in my transfer case rebuild. So today uh, we're going to make a, uh, a puller for that and I'll show you guys a, a simple way to get that off. So uh, <clears throat> stick with me and uh, I'll take you through it step by step. Okay, <clears throat> whether you've got to uh, rebuild your transfer case or maybe you're just changing your brake shoes, this is what's going to be staring you in the face when you get your uh, when you get your dry shaft off. You get those bolts through, and a lot of times <clears throat> I'll get transfer cases in here, and the backing plate will be all bent up. Um, the, the drum might be broken, you know, guys. They're really beat on these to try and get them off. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a puller in here, a three-jaw puller, because that's a sloped surface in there. It doesn't fit on there good. It's hard to grab these jaws in the back, uh, these grooves with with the jaws of your puller. Uh, they're kind of uh, they're kind of tapered as well. <clears throat> so what I was doing over in the lathe, I was relieving. This is the flange that's in there. This is just an old one out of a, a busted up transfer case. I was relieving this area so I can get a nut in there. And now a nut will fit in there. And what I did, I just took an old one of these. And that's going to go on there. And make sure you can see that, okay. That's going to go on there. And then you'll put your nuts back on. And I just made this out of stuff I had laying around, nothing special. This is just an old flange, like I say. Turn that in the lathe to fit the nut. I welded a nut on this side, and it just happens to be a 9 16 because I just had that laying around. And um, I've got a grade 8 screw that I kind of turn the end on. And. <clears throat> And that just threads right in there and as you tighten that screw that's going to press against the shaft in there and that's going to withdraw it's going to pull your drum right out it's going to neatly and, and easily pull that drum out this particular transfer case was very hard uh, there was no way this was going to move some transfer cases you could just pull the drum off or come off in your hands and some of them doesn't feel like they're going to move at all this was you know, one and maybe 50 that just absolutely would not budge. So, <clears throat> that's the puller I made, and that works real well. It's strong enough where you're not going to bend it, and the bolt holes are already in there for you. 
takes just a couple minutes to weld a nut on there get a decent bolt for your pressure screw put some uh, uh, lube on there so it doesn't go all up on you and then you'll just you'll be able to withdraw that without any trouble now, I know not everybody's gonna have an extra flange laying around um, but that really <clears throat> really seems to be the best way you don't have much room on these bolts so if you don't have a flange uh, maybe take a piece of quarter inch plate that big punch some holes in it uh, you'll need at least quarter inch plate uh, maybe get away with 5 16 or 3 8 anything where you can get a nut on that bolt um, and drill some holes in it weld a nut to it um, even half inch nut and bolt will do like I said I just happen to have a 9 16 bolt laying around you can use half inch 9 16 5 8 wherever you got laying around uh, make sure it's long enough because like this one fought me right to the very end I had this this bolt bottomed out in there because these splines were so tight so <clears throat> just get yourself a piece of quarter inch plate or something like that pop some holes in it weld a nut to it you know drill a hole in it for your screw to go through and that's the easiest way I know of to get these things off a lot of guys have been wondering and um, probably that transfer case I did uh, that read that whole rebuild I did that one must have come off real easy so I didn't even think to show you guys but this one gave me a hard time like I said I thought of it too late I could have showed you it coming off but I uh, thought of it too late but um, this morning I got up and and um, there was another uh, viewer request for how to get the flange off so I figured it was time to uh, to make a puller and show you guys how I do it so there it is uh, simple effective way to get that off uh, makes it easy to change your brakes you won't be dreading changing your brake shoes uh, on the emergency brake anymore and uh, if you got to get in there um, that's a good way to do it and that's how I do it and <clears throat> I've got pullers like this and uh, and you won't break them they're super strong and uh, that's the way I get in there so just a quick video for today I hope that helps out everybody that's wondering how to get that off and if you like the video hit the like button subscribe to the channel check out my other videos and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.